Hello, I'm Laura Keyes with the National Weather Service Office in Corpus Christi, and today I'll be introducing you to the new SPOT webpage. This new page is available at weather.gov forward slash SPOT and will become active on October 17th of this year. Users will now access one national page, which will ensure the correct forecast office gets the request and will allow users to monitor multiple areas at the same time. To submit a new SPOT request, click the link here. You will be brought to a national page where you need to select the incident location. This page now features a drag and drop Google Maps interface. You can move the marker and the map will zoom. Pan and move the marker to your more specific location or you can enter your address or city here. Rather, if you know the specific latitude and longitude, you can enter here or as you move your marker around on the map, the latitude and longitude as well as the elevation will automatically fill in for you. It's very important to get the correct location for the incident so that the correct forecast office gets the request. Unlike the legacy spot forecast pages, the new spot web page will determine which forecast office is responsible for the spot request. Once you ensure that the correct incident location has been selected, you will need to select the incident type. The different incident types will determine what forecast elements are available on the next page. For example, marine elements would not be needed for a wildfire request. Select the Generate a Spot Request when you are ready. At the top of the next page, you will need to fill out your contact information. The areas highlighted in red are required for the spot request. A new section has been added to enter your email address as well. On the left hand side, the location is already filled in, but you can edit the elevation if needed. To the right is the fire weather supplemental information you can add. This section will not be available if a non-fire request is made. Looking now at the forecast information, there is an option to choose when to deliver the forecast and when the forecast will start. Of note, the forecast starting time can only be within 24 hours of the delivery time. On the legacy page, this was called the ignition date and time and it's been replaced with the forecast starting time. You can choose between one or two hour intervals here and the first period will be dynamic based on the forecast start time. It's now easier to select and deselect weather elements based on the period or the individual elements themselves. And as stated before, the available elements shown will vary depending on the type of spot request. On the right, you can select if you would like a high split model request. And there is a remarks section where you can include specific concerns or any other information you feel forecasters should be aware of. Observation entry is now a bit more standardized with drop down menus. The fields highlighted in yellow are mandatory for entering any OBS you have. Although observations are not necessary for a spot request, it's greatly appreciated and helps the forecasters when compiling your spot request. Once you have reviewed your information and are ready to submit your request, simply click the Submit Request button at the bottom of the page. Once you have submitted your spot request, you will be brought automatically to the Spot Forecast Monitor page, which looks significantly different from the Legacy Monitor page. Here, you can set the area you want to monitor by zooming and panning across the map. The list of active spot forecasts will change as you zoom in and pan across the map. As with the legacy page, pending requests are highlighted in green, while completed requests are highlighted in red. If the forecaster has a question about your spot request, it will be highlighted in purple. On the legacy spot forecast page, it only lists requests for one calendar day, but with the new page, incidents can be viewed all together on the same page. When an incident is finished, the incident will be closed by the forecast office. Closing an incident will send all of the forecasts and information to an archive. To view requests for a specific day, a calendar option is listed on the right hand side as well. On the legacy spot page, multiple requests for the same incident would clutter up the display with multiple lines. But on the new spot page, there will only be one line per incident and only the latest forecast information will be listed there. You can correct a request under the Actions column by selecting Change Request. There's also an option for you to submit observations. This will allow you to submit new observations without having to submit a whole new request. This way, all observations for the incident will be databased and available for the forecaster. When the status is changed from green to red, go ahead and select the name of your incident. This will bring you to the new forecast page. Here you have all the site information as well as the forecasted listed below. 
At the bottom of the page, there are several options. A printer-friendly version of the forecast is available here. If you have feedback about the spot to provide the forecasters, you can do so here. If the forecast has become unrepresentative of current conditions, click the Request Immediate Forecast Update here. This will let you submit new OBS for the incident to the forecaster to make adjustments with. There is also two options to copy your information to another request. Selecting Copy Info to the Spot Request for New Incident will take you back to the first page to select a new location and a new type of spot request. On the second page, though, all of your contact information will already be input in the form. If you select Copy Info to New Request for this incident, you will go straight to the second page. You will not be able to change the location, but you can adjust selected weather elements and forecast delivery start dates and times. This will allow you to easily schedule the next forecast needed for an incident without having to re-enter most of the information. Finally, you can select the link at the bottom of the page to go back to the Forecaster Monitor page where you can continue monitoring for any other updates. If you would like to bookmark this page, zoom to the specific map extent you would like to monitor. Keep in mind that the viewable active spot requests listed below will adjust based on your geographic location and the map's extent. Once you have moved to the area of your choice, select the permalink for page bookmark. This will give you a specific URL that you can save in your bookmarks for the future. Once again, this new spot forecast page will become active beginning October 17th.